Roe v. Wade being overturned and the loss of abortion access is one of the most pressing economic issues and challenges facing us. In the 26 states which are likely to ban abortion after this decision, these states already have an economic architecture with low wages, barely funded public services, reduced access to health care, many have not expanded Medicaid, and many have little worker power. So this decision and this legislation is hitting first in the states where it is as economically difficult as possible to support oneself let alone carry out a pregnancy and raise a child. We know that just living in a state that has this more oppressive regime with regards to women means women are not taking those risks and going into higher paid occupations that would offer them more economic security. We know that the complicating realities of the people who are seeking abortion also includes housing insecurity, unstable employment, lack of, of health care coverage for their primary care. Women who were denied an abortion were more likely to face unemployment, bankruptcy, delinquent debt, up to four years after they were denied the abortion. We know that the criminalization of pregnancy has severe collateral consequences, including economic consequences. The women who are targeted are disproportionately low income, women of color, and coping with substance dependency. It's not actually a choice if you are making a decision between the ability to care for and feed your family and the ability to continue a pregnancy to term. State policymakers and advocates absolutely must recognize that the fall of Roe v. Wade is an economic issue. This is not a sideline cultural issue. And that is the first step in coming up with solutions and strategies, solidarity and organization for what will certainly be a steep battle to win these rights back.